Okay, uh, we've got some worked examples here for IGCSE, and that's Ed Excel. Um, this is uh, these questions are courtesy of Save My Exams. It's their gold paper three. So um, <clears throat> let's just uh, get started. So uh, we've got a circle here and a triangle in it. AOD is the diameter of a circle with center O and radius nine. And we can see that. ABC is an arc of the circle. Um, it's there. Uh, and AC is a chord. Yeah. ADC is 35. That's that. Calculate the area of the shaded <coughs> segment. Um, so as uh, uh, often with these things where we've got something where we don't seem to have any kind of formula or anything to uh, the, to give us that area directly, then what we tend to be doing is looking at, um, at you know, the difference between two, two areas. Um, you know, maybe we, we sort of have to um, take away something that might be double counted or 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 whatever. And in this case, we're actually looking at the area of this sector, AOC minus the area of the triangle. <clears throat> okay, so now in both of those cases, that would be fine if we had this angle here. Um, because we could uh, we could certainly find this we could this triangle we could use um, half a b c half a b sine c uh, for that and this and the and this sector well we would uh, well we know the area of the circle don't we because we got the radius so we would know which proportion of it fell into this arc um, <clears throat> so clearly we need to know this angle. Now, how do we do that? Right, okay, not too difficult, really. Uh, so the point here is that this triangle, o OCD, is uh, isosceles. Uh, so um, uh, that means, that, uh, because these two sides are both radiuses and therefore they're, they're the same. So this angle here is also going to be 35, meaning that this angle here, COD, is going to be 110. And therefore, this one is 70. AOC is 70. So, and now if we look at the area of the sector, it's going to be with the area of the circus pi r squared. And we're looking at 7360ths of the whole circle. <clears throat> so we can work that through to 49.480. Uh, that's the three decimal places. Um, that's what that what the sector is. Now the triangle, so we're going to use half A B sine C, you know, A and B sine of 70. Uh, plug that in there as well. And that's going to give us 38.058 to three decimal places. So therefore the shaded area is going to be the difference between the those two, which is 11.422 or 11.423 significant figures. Okay, so that is that one. Uh, now, number two, uh, show that this thing, root three plus square root of three plus square root of 27 over the square root of two can be expressed in the form square root of k. k is an integer. Right, so the, the, the thing with, there's two things really, is we, we've got to kind of bash these two together um as well as we can and then we've got to cope with the fact that we've got a denominator that is irrational <clears throat> and um which uh, we don't like that basically we need to get rid of that but first of all let's have a look um so uh root three plus well um we could write this as root nine times root three we like to factorize out uh squares if we can because then when we split them into separate bus shelters like this, then the square root of the square is going to be straightforward to resolve, and that is just three. So that's going to give us root three plus three root three, which is going to be four root three, <clears throat> and all that is over root two. Now, uh, we, want to, we want to rationalize that denominator, so we can do that simply by, well, if we multiply by root two, um, but then we have to multiply the numerator by root two as well. So that's going to be um, the denominator is going to 
going to multiply out to two. And then on the numerator, we've got four times root three times root two. Well, root three times root two is the same as root, if we crush them into the same bush shelter, be root four times root three times two, which is root six. So, uh, so we've got four root six over two, and the rational parts divide to, to root six. Now, it's not quite where we're trying to get to, because we have to put it back into a single third. So we have to kind of um, express this as root four, and then we can put them into the same bush shelter for root square root of four times six, or the square root of 24. So lots of messing around with that one. Um, but the rules are fairly easy. Um, you know, um, we, you know, we, we crush things into the same bush shelter or split them out. Um, uh, and yeah, so it's, it's relatively straightforward. So have a look at this. Simplify fully this expression 4 over x plus 3 over 2 minus x. Well, quite simply, we just need a common denominator. Um, and that's going to... And then it's just t two here. We're always going to get that from the the product of the two, which is x into two minus x. And so, therefore, uh, if we multiply the four over x, uh, if we multiply the denominator by two minus x, then the same with the numerator. And then on the second fraction, then we multiply top and bottom by the, of x. <clears throat> And then we can write it over this common denominator and add, and, and add whatever these terms are on the top. So that's pretty straightforward. And uh, we get that simplifies to 8 minus x over x into 2 minus x. That's number 3. All right. Number 4. The diagram shows a trapezium ABCD with AD parallel to BC. AB is x, that's this height. BC is x plus 5, that's the short parallel side. And AD is x plus 8. Okay, so it's three longer, isn't it, on, on the bottom? <clears throat> the area of the trapezium is 42 square centimetres. Show that 2x squared plus 13x minus 84 equals 0. Right, so um, so what they've done here is they they told us the same information in two different ways, and that's how we can form our equation. So the equation of a trapezium is is basically it's the it's it's the average of the two parallel sides times the height. Okay, so. Um, so this, uh, so the average of the two parallel sides is going to be the sum of them divided by two. That's what we've got there times the height, um, and therefore um, this we just simplified it a little bit, um, and that uh, so multiplied by x there. So that's going to uh, give us this, and that's all equal to forty-two. So if we multiply through by two. Um, so 84, or our 2 goes from the denominator here and multiplies that 42 to give us that. Uh, we can multiply that out and rearrange, and we get 2x squared plus 13x minus 84 equals 0 as requested. Right, it says uh, then calculate the perimeter of the trapezium. Well, we actually need to know x in order to do that. Um, but um, fear not, because uh, if we solve this equation, then that is exactly what we can find. So um, now what I've done here is I've exploded the middle. So that's what this little block here is. So I multiply two by minus 84 again, minus 168. So what I'm looking for is two factors of minus 168 that will add to 13. Okay, so um, I can go through the different options here, by two, three, and, and so on until I find what I'm looking for. And in actual fact, uh, 21 and eight do the trick, plus 21 and minus eight do the trick. So I'm writing it like this, split that 
13x into these two parts. Um, and then I can factorize x out of this first two. I'm going to split it into two. Factorize this first bit and factorize the second bit. x into 2x plus 21. That's what we've got for those two. And minus 4 into x, mi um, x minus uh, 21 there. That's not uh, quite what I mean. Um, that is 2x plus 21. <laughs> um, let's just check that. Minus 4 times 2x is minus 8x, and minus 4 times plus 21 is minus 84. Okay, so um, so now we can we can group this x and this minus 4. Um, we've got x minus 4 into 2x plus 21, and that equals 0. Uh, now, uh, the solution we're looking for is going to be a positive number. Uh, this factor here is going to give us a negative solution, um, but this one is going to give us a positive, a positive solution of x equals 4. So uh, that uh, is that, so x equals 4, but we, we want the perimeter, don't we? So uh, we don't know CD yet, but um, let's just have a look. I did say that that distance there, if we drop a perpendicular down from C there, then, uh, well, this is going to be four down the length of the, the perpendicular. And then this bit is going to be three, isn't it? Because x plus eight is three more than x plus five. So I've drawn that here. Three, four, well, it's a Pythagorean triple. Three, four, so this length is going to be five. All right, so now we can put all these two, these things together. We've got x is this a, uh, b x plus 5 at the top, x plus 8 at the bottom, plus this 5 coming down the diagonal bit. Substitute x equals 4 in there, and that's going to give us 30 centimetres. So that would be the perimeter of the trapezium. Okay. Right. Uh, the grouped frequency table gives the information about the ages of 200 elephants. That's what we've got there. So let's complete the cumulative frequency table. I've just <clears throat> moved it up here. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, 0 to 10 is 50, but then 0 to 20 is the sum of these, 115. 0 to 30 is these three together, 155, and so on. And then by the time we get to this last one, fortunately, we've got 200. That's a check, isn't it, really, that <clears throat> we've got, uh, we've added it up right, 200 elephants. <clears throat> Right, if we're now going to draw our cumulative frequency chart, then what we need to do is we need to start there at that zero. And um, at 10, we need to draw 55. 20, we need to do 115, that's there. 30, we need to do 155, that's there. 50, we need to do... 190 and then 200 and then we can draw these up you could do this freehand if you're good at it but i think on something like this you could just do it with straight lines um it <clears throat> would be would be uh just as good all right so it says use the graph to find an estimate for the number of elephants with ages of more than 26 years right in order to do this we're looking at years along the bottom here so if we we, we take our 26, project it up to the line, and across we get to 144, I reckon. <clears throat> so, um, so that's telling us that these, um, this group here between 200 and 144, are those with ages of more than 26 years. That's all, effectively all these. <clears throat> yeah. So these ages here represent this number here, or represented by this number, and these ages by this number. So that's uh, 56, 56 elephants, that's our estimate. Um, and then it says, um, that's it, we've done it. Um, excellent, right, okay. So we can go on to number six. Here are eight dominoes, right, okay. Recognize all those, we'll put in a bag, 
Riaz takes at random a domino from the bag, find the probability that he takes a domino with a total of eight spots or a domino with nine spots. Okay, so we're just taking one. So we, these are the ones that um, uh, uh, he could take. So the, the, these, incidentally, just that seven is the number of spots there, eight the number of spots there, six there, and so on. So I've just written them out like that. So he, there, there are five different ones he could take, which would satisfy this first criteria, eight or nine. Well, there's five. There's five that satisfy that, and out of a total of eight, so it would be five eights. So that's the probability that he takes a domino with a total of eight or nine on it. <clears throat> now, um, pull the next part over here. Halima takes at random two dominoes from the bag of eight dominoes without replacement. Two. Okay, so the thing we've got to bear in mind here is once you've taken one out, uh, you've only got seven left in. <clears throat> Uh, work out the probability of the total number of spots on the two dominoes is 18. Right. Now, in order to do these, uh, these sort of, this kind of without replacement problem, um, then um, I mean, we could draw a probability tree. That would be one way of doing it. Um, but so if we, if we actually, if we actually identify these differently then we can we can take a bit of a shortcut really so this is what i've done here so i call this seven sub one which is the first occurrence of seven in this list list eight sub one six sub one seven sub two because that's the second occurrence of seven and so on eight two nine one eight three and nine two so now the probability of getting a total of 18 well there's two ways we can do this we can pick this this one first followed by this one, or we can pick 9-2 first, followed by 9-1. So let's think about that. The probability of this first bit, 9-1 followed by 9-2, is going to be 1 eighth, because remember when we're taking our first draw, there are eight in the bag. There's only one, that's this one, 9-1, that actually kind of uh, satisfies this particular statement here, 1 eighth. And then, of course, when we take the second one, there are only seven left in the bag. Um, and so it's this one out of seven. So that's the probability of that. Uh, very similarly, the probability of this, of taking this combination is the same. These are both 1 56ths. So the total probability is 1 28th. <clears throat> right. Um, then the um, Second part to this part B, the total number of spots on the two dominoes is 17. So again, we're going to stick with, uh, this is without replacement. So um, the total number of spots on the two dominoes is 17. So right, there's a lot of ways that we can actually get that uh, um, situation. So we can choose 8 sub 1 and then 9 sub 1, or 8 sub 1 and 9 sub 2, or 8 sub 2 and 9 sub 1. Well, you have to go through the various combinations to do this. Normally, we fix one and then vary the vary the second one, then change the first fix and vary the second one, and so on. And then, of course, we've also got to consider down here is fix um, uh, fix nine as well, and fix nine two. So it's basically got to work through the, all those. Um, <clears throat> Okay, now in each of these cases, these are unique if, once we have numbered them. So they are basically all, um, this has got a probability of one eighth, this has got a probability of one seventh. Okay. Um, so, um, so if we want to, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there's 12 things, each of which has a probability of 156, i.e. one over seven times eight. So it's 1256. Um, and that is um, the probability. I'm not quite sure what this is, this is saying. Oh, seven times eight, that's right. Uh, 12 over seven times eight, and that's 1256. <clears throat> All righty. Um, okay, so that is the answer to that. So just to recap, yeah, if we're doing without replacement, uh, then very often um, 
rather than drawing a probability tree, probability tree for this would be quite quite a complicated tree to draw. Um, we can use a shortcut, and um, what we're doing, we're actually just pick, picking particular sort of leaves, the right hand end, you know, off the tree. We're not bothering drawing all the things that we're not interested in. So that's really what we're doing. It's still the same principle as a probability tree. Um, so that's uh, what we've done there. Right, now we've got number seven. Um, we've got a function here, drawn this below. It's the square root of x minus six. <clears throat> Um, oh no! In fact, uh, sorry. This is this is a different function. So um, um, this, this one's g. So this is f of x equals square root of x minus six. Find f of ten. So we're just substituting uh, ten in for x. So that's going to give us a square root of ten minus six. Uh, right. Well, um, that, you know we got plus or minus. So the, so actually, it's going to be plus or minus two. Uh, for that, and state which values of x must be excluded from a domain of f. So which x's can we not validly put into this? Well, obviously anything that's going to make this square root negative. Um, so, uh, so x has got to be bigger or equal to 6, otherwise this would be negative. So uh, we've got to um, we've got to exclude all the values of x less than six from the domain. Right. Um, let's have a look at this. So this, this part says the diagram shows part of the graph of y equals g of x. Okay. Well, this looks like a, a cubic, doesn't it? Or be part of something. Something more complicated, but um, um, that would be the uh, positive cubic going like that. Maybe we probably don't need to know. So find g of two. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's okay. I mean, this is you have to do this graphically, obviously. Um, so g of two. Let's just have a look. If we go take the value of an x equals two and across, we get to here. So that looks like seven. So g of two equals seven. <clears throat> All right. So um, next part says um, uh, right, we've not done not done D. We've gone straight on to doing E. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll just jump D. Um, e, one of the solutions of g of x equals k, where k is a number, is x equals 1. Find the other solutions. Right, okay. Well, this graph, g of x, where is it 1? Uh, sorry, where, um, g of x equals k. So, one of the, so what we're saying, one of the solutions is x equals 1. So, in other words, g of 1 equals k. g of 1 equals k. So that means k is here. We follow this up to the curve and along. It basically means um, 12, isn't it? So g of 1 equals 12. OK, so what are the other solutions? Well, uh, you know, anywhere along this line, we can see if, you know, um, you know where where does this line actually hit uh, a value of 12? What was that? I mean, anywhere along here. So this is 1. So this looks like minus 0.8. And this is another one here, which looks like 3.8 here. So these other values would be not minus 0 0.8 and 3.8. <coughs> Here's that. And then it says, find an estimate for the gradient of the curve at the point where x equals 3.5. OK, right. Well, what we need to do, I mean, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but... Um, <clears throat> It really draw draw a tangent. It's quite difficult to get it exact. Really, we don't really know, but I bet that kind of looks like a tangent, doesn't it? And then once we've taken the uh, the tangent, what we're going to do is we're going to take the rise over the run of that um, of that particular um, line. 
So if we look up this, so this is the blue line. So we're going to take this section here, which uh, sort of comes up to the, the end of the graph paper and down to the, the x-axis. So this rise here is 17. This run goes from 2.5 to 4.5, so that is going to be 2. So the rise is 17, the run is 2, the rise of the run is 17 over 2, which is 8.5. So that would be um, our estimate for the gradient. You can't say it's exact because we can't be sure we've drawn the tangent exactly correctly there. But that would be our way of estimating it. <clears throat> Okay, so um, let's go on to question eight. Um, so we've got this triangle here. Calculate the value of x. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so we can use the cosine rule. Uh, the, the 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 cosine rule here, which is a squared b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So, uh, so uh, I mean, we can we can rewrite this in terms of our diagram if we've got letters on here, but, but basically what we're saying is that this angle is a, well, it, it's x degrees, isn't it? But the angle a um, and small a will be the length of the side opposite that angle. And these other two will be b and c. So that's that is our sort of uh, our uh, kind of memorable equation, if you like, for the cosine rule. If we just twist this round, we're going to get cosine of a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared. These these two would be b and c. Um, I'll say okay. So cosine of a equals four squared plus six squared, four squared plus six squared minus eight squared, um, all over. 2 times 4 times 6. So that's what we've got there. Now this comes out as negative minus 28 over 48. Right. Um, well, don't panic. Um, the point is that uh, cosines of angles between 90 and 180, which is what this is, are going to be negative. And uh, if you uh, can remember what the cosine curve looks like, um, it's a rather badly drawn one, um, but it starts off at one, it goes at 90 degrees, it goes down to zero, then 180 is minus one, then 270 back to zero, and then 360 back to one. So we're actually looking at this section here where it's negative. So um, so that's, uh, that's why it's negative. Now, the thing is, when we... If, we now want to calculate this angle from our calculators, then what's going to happen is we're going to, depending on our calculator, but we're probably going to be, be getting an acute angle out of this. So the, and the acute angle that we get um, is going to be, well, um, it's going to be 54.3 degrees. Because we're basically just taking this this part 0 0.58358, and that's 54.3 degrees. Now, um, the angle that we want, because of the symmetry of this, the angle that we want is going to be as is going to be this far short of 180. So we have to subtract. 54.3 from 180 in order to uh, to get this value. Okay, so I think in order to do this, you probably, if you want to kind of, if you're not convinced by that, you probably need a rather better, larger diagram um, to, to do this. But what we're sort of saying is that um, we've got this value here. Okay, and we want the corresponding negative value down here. And, and you can see that actually they are symmetrical about 90 degrees. Okay, so, um, so in other words, this distance is going to be the same as this distance. 
Right. Okay. So um, if you need a little bit more on that, you have to um, consult the um, the trigonometry section in order to get a bit more information about that. Um, that's essentially what we're doing. Okay. Um, right. This last question is a set theory question. Um, a and B are two sets. The total number in the universal set, this is what it's called, is 37. Um, the number in A is 22. The number in the intersection of A and B is 12. The number in the union is 30. Complete the Venn diagram. Okay, so um, I've just redrawn it here to give us a bit more space. Now, the, the, these questions, are, sometimes they give you the elements, sometimes they give you the number of elements. And this is the number of elements, and that's what's you know, uh, meant by this, this N. It's the number of elements in A. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, so um, the first question says, uh, well, complete the diagram. So um so yeah so so we've got the um the number of elements in a is 22 now we don't know how that's split between this section and this section so initially i've just put um put x in there um so this bit here would be x minus 22. Let's just put it in red there. Okay. But we know, uh, but, uh, or in fact, it's 22 minus x, of course. Uh, but we know that the, uh, going on to the next statement, that uh, the intersection is actually 12. So 22 minus x is equal to 12. And that's what marked in there, which therefore tells us that that, uh, that x must be 10. Now, you, you don't have to do that algebra, but you could probably just figure that out. Anyway, <clears throat> um, but that's one way of doing it. Um, and then we've got the union is going to be 30. Well, if we've got 10 there and 12 there, and then the union, which is all of these here, is 30, then there must be 8 in here. And if there's 30 in there and the universal set's got 37, then the, the other 7 must be somewhere outside here in this space out here. <clears throat> right. So uh, that is our completed diagram. Find the number of elements in the set a intersection B complement. Right. So in order to do this, it's kind of quite useful to actually sort of say, well, um, A um, has got these two bits, the bit with 10 in and the bit with the 12 in. And B has got a B complement. Well, B is this, isn't it? The 12 and the A. So a B complement is what's not in B, has got this 10 and this 7. Got the 10 and the 7. Uh, <clears throat> so if we're looking at the intersection between these two, then 10 is the intersection. Now, this is made a little bit easier because all these numbers, 8, 12, 10, and 7, are unique. I think normally when you do problems with a number of elements, you very often find that you're given things which are unique. Um, if not, you might have to just give a little subscript um, to identify which which it is. So I mean, if it was 10 outside, you might want to write this as 10 sub 1 and this is 10 sub 2. And then you could you could virtually deal with them as if they were elements rather than numbers of elements. But, uh, but that's what we've got there. So obviously the intersection is what's in both of these and that's 10. So that's what we've got there. Then the number of elements in A complement union B complement. Well, A complement is is what's not in A, and that's this 7 and this 8. And what's not in B is this 7 and this 10. So the union of the two is going to be this, like the, the, the superset is going to be 7, 8, and 10. So we can add those together because they're numbers of elements, 7, 8, and 10, so that's equal to 25. So that's the number of elements in not A, union, not 
B. Right. Okay, so um, I think some good questions there. These sort of typical of uh, some of the harder questions that you're going to be, be seeing uh, in an IGCSE paper. Um, and they're in the style of the at Excel questions. So uh, hopefully that has been useful. Uh, so I'll see you next time.